it's your team. Like, it, what is this your team stuff? You know what I'm saying? Like, and I think now, so you got players who are more talented than ever coming into the league. They're getting picked, you know, one, two, three, four, five. They're making more money than those picks ever made. So not only that, now you're giving them the keys to the franchise. There, you know, there's nobody there to to really let them know, like, you're super talented, but, like, you got to earn stuff around here. You know what I mean? You got to earn your way. So the 2019 NBA draft is one that I believe is aging very strangely. And five years later, I don't really know what to make of it. Now, when people think about this draft, they really like to highlight the off court stuff with a lot of these players. And oddly enough, it has been a lot of incidents. But even on the court with a lot of these players, this draft hasn't really made a lot of sense to me. Now, looking back at this class five years ago, it did have immense talent. And going back into a time machine five years ago, it was one of the more hype draft classes. So that was to be expected. But how exactly this talent almost simultaneously aged in the NBA is mainly what I'm talking about. Now, the tail end of the 2010s really seemed to be producing drafts that damn near all hit. Maybe not all the names that we thought would be stars actually became stars, but we got insane productivity. The 2017 draft, it might go down as one of the best draft classes ever. Markel and Lonzo obviously as number one and two picks, they were disappointments. Really wish they could have stayed healthy, but overall, we got the perfect blend of stars and key role players. Jason Tatum, De'Aaron Fox, Donovan Mitchell, Bam, Laurie Markkinen, even players like Kyle Kuzma, Isaiah Hartenstein, Derek White, OG Ananobi. This was really an insane draft. The 2018 draft, similar to 2017, the first two picks may have not been exactly what we wanted, but overall, it aged very well. Luka, Trey Young, Jalen Brunson, Shea, and overall, we got a good batch of key players in today's NBA. These drafts aged very well. Oddly enough, the 2019 one did too at first, but it feels like a lot of them simultaneously hit this halt in their careers where they're working through a rough patch and they're currently trying to get back on track. And it's not just one or two of them. It's a good amount of players that pop early in this draft class. Today's video is sponsored by DraftKings Sportsbook. Football is here. The fall is approaching, my favorite season. And DraftKings wants to make sure you're maximizing your experience and they're back with an offer you really can't miss. All new customers have to do is bet just $5 on any wager and get $250 in bonus bets instantly. Also with this offer, they're even throwing in one month of NFL Plus Premium on them. Football fans, take advantage. Use that instant 250 in bonus bets and bet anytime touchdowns on DraftKings. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry. Join DraftKings Daily Fantasy where you can get in on all the action. Football is finally here. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. New customers use my promo code SWISHOUT, bet just $5 on any wager, and get $250 in bonus bets instantly. That's my promo code SWISHOUT, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Zion Williamson today had surgery to correct a torn meniscus in his right knee. He will miss six to eight weeks. What is your reaction to this bombshell? Zion entering this draft. He was obviously the main focus as he got the curse of being compared to the one and only LeBron James. I, I would hate that. Zion got this early in high school just for how abnormally athletic he was with a perfect combination of size, speed, strength, and leaping ability. Now we know Zion was never really like a carbon copy of Braun, and to be honest, he doesn't really play like him. Braun was much more of a point forward coming into the league, and he got comparisons to Magic and Penny Hardaway. Zion was always much more Barkley-like. For Zion, it was much more the physical component of a man amongst boys figure joining the NBA with this NBA-ready body and play style. He was a bully already. I'll never forget that summer league game where he made Kevin Knox look like a fifth grader playing his dad. But Zion's career, it started out pretty much exactly how it's aged and what's tough for him is how good he's actually been when he's actually healthy. I don't want to compare him to LeBron like everybody else did, but if you were to compare his second season with LeBron's second season in way less minutes, the numbers are very comparable. But he's never really been able to shake those injuries and that's always paused those brief moments of greatness that we have seen. In his first four years in the NBA, Zion only played 37% of his games, 
last year, and it was very ironic to me. It felt like his three most significant games of the year were all against LeBron, the player he got compared to his whole life. The end season tournament game in December, where Zion was visibly out of shape and he got heavily scrutinized for it. The last game of the season where all the Pelicans had to do was win that game and they secured a top six spot in the conference. Zion only had 12 points, LeBron balled out, and obviously Zion got slammed for it. Literally like two days later, they had a play-in date with the Lakers again, and it felt like that one game perfectly represented this man's entire career, literally. That was easily the best game I've ever seen Zion Williamson play, especially since it was on a big stage against LeBron. I believe he had like 40 points, nine points in the first four minutes in the fourth quarter, and he ultimately got hurt, couldn't finish the game, and they lost. It felt so indicative of what his career has always been. He's great when he's there, but somehow an injury always finds him. Very, very unfortunate because he actually played the majority of last season and it felt like he was finally shaking that narrative. He does look a lot slimmer right now, but injuries never seem to be on his side. Yeah. Because he just lost 39 million because he wasn't on yeah. one of the three in all NBA teams. He's about to lose another 20, 30 million of these endorsements deal. So I want to know in the process of job being job, job do your thing. What y'all gonna do now? Mm. Now, the theme of this draft seems to be very, very strong starts with their team, and the steam seeming to die a bit five years later. I think next year, John Moran is going to have a very, very strong season. I don't care what's happened off the court, he's still one of the most electrifying players we have in this league. And even last year in that short stint, he showed it. In Jaws' last two years healthy, there's only been six players that's averaged 26 points and seven dimes a night. And yes, John Moran is on that list. If you look at stars that actually put up great numbers and leads their teams to wins, Ja has one of the highest win percentages amongst players that's averaged 20 points a night. His productivity actually leads to wins. Even last year, they were 6-3 with Ja coming in late into the season and on a very subpar roster, and he averaged like 25-8. and eight. He hit a game winner last year in his first game back against Zion, I believe. So yes, Ja has always been that dude. But even him, his hype died a bit and we know a lot of it has to do with the off-court stuff. Watching Anthony Edwards get all this admiration, all this new advertising, and basically being ushered in to the new face of the NBA, it's kind of funny because now he's the NBA darling and at one point, that was John Morant. No shade to Ant because Ant deserves it. He just went to the Western Conference Finals and honestly, I believe his ceiling is a little bit higher than Ja's. But at one point, Ja had the entire culture behind him. But for Ja, repeated gun incidents and suspensions and him not really seeming like he's able to navigate through all the distractions that comes along with being the star that he was, it just hurt a lot of his momentum. But out of everyone in this draft, I actually have the most confidence in him bouncing back and having a crazier second half to his 20s. Kind of like Ja, but not as good of a player in my opinion, Darius Garland also had his best year in his third season and since, it's felt like he struggled to keep that momentum going. The 2022 offseason, it gave us two very exciting trades at that time, but two years later, they've proven not to really be the best fits. DeJounte Murray and Trey Young, that, I mean, that one is obvious and it kind of blew up as soon as it started. And the not so obvious one has been Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell. In year three, without Donovan Mitchell, we seen the best Darius Garland, where he was setting everything up for Cleveland's offense, orchestrating the entire team, and he was doing what he was drafted to do, be the point guard. To me, that's clearly what he's special at, and that's the role that he's supposed to play in the NBA. That year, he was one of only seven players that averaged 20 points and eight dimes. I don't think Darius Garland fell off or is in any way less talented than he was prior to Donovan Mitchell even being there. And I know he's had injuries. I think it's simply the cost of sacrifice. Yes, I know Darius was hurt last year, and it's always tough to get back into a rhythm when you're working yourself back from an injury. But it's even tougher at any point to have two small ball dominant guards in one back court, and when the better one seems to be thriving and the lesser one consequently seems to be suffering from it. At that point, GMs kind of have to look themselves in the mirror and make that decision. And I believe Darius needs a new team. That's just my opinion. Every year since Donovan Mitchell has been there, Darius Garland's points have gone down, understandably so. His assist, they've gone down and he's a phenomenal passer. His shots, they've gone down. His usage rate, it's gone down. 
Meanwhile, Donovan Mitchell just had two career years in Cleveland where everything is going up and he's dominating the rock. It's kind of ironic because the Cavs got rid of Colin Sexton really because one, he was injured and they didn't want to pay him, but two, because of really this exact same problem. They had two small guards sharing one backcourt. Now it feels like they find themselves with this exact same problem. And to me, I, I think Darius needs a new team. Tyler Hero being drafted from Kentucky, it damn near felt like he was identical to Devin Booker, who also got drafted from Kentucky in a lot of ways. He's exactly what I mean when I say this draft, it popped immediately. Tyler's rookie year, even though I understand it was the bubble, I get it. A lot of why Miami even made the finals was Tyler Hero. As a rookie, he averaged 13 points, and in the playoffs in that bubble, he bumped it up to 16 points. But like some of his classmates, around year three is where stuff seemed to drop a bit for Tyler Hero. I always felt a little bit bad for him because he was always in trade talks and his job security, it felt frisky constantly. But year three, he sacrificed, made sure he came off the bench and won six man of the year just to miss the Eastern Conference Finals in which they lost in seven games. They, they could have used Tyler Hero. The following season, it's not like he took a massive leap or anything, but he's always been to me the X factor for that team. They rely way too much on culture, role players, and undrafted players, stuff like that. And he's the one guy that can also put the ball on the floor and create for himself. That's why he's significant to me. The Miami Heat, after having to play two play-in games, they actually make the finals and Tyler Hero gets hurt in their first playoff game. Talk, uh, talk about bad luck. Last season, after basically missing the entire conference finals in 2022 and really the entire playoffs in 2023, he missed half the year and Pat Riley doesn't really sound too happy about it. Jordan Poole's run is really what I think some people romanticize Lin Sanity to really be. Lin Sanity was short. Jordan Poole looked like for a brief or a good moment, like he was that dude. The year Golden State won that championship, I can never forget how great Jordan Poole was and how pivotal it was, especially with Steph getting hurt. In the last 20 games, a pretty good sample size in which Steph, he was hurt for a lot of them. He was damn near averaging 25 and five on 50, 40, 90 splits to begin the playoffs. Remember, Steph was coming off the bench, still nursing his injuries. Jordan Poole was damn near averaging 30 in the first three games and look at his efficiencies. They needed that because like I said, Steph was still getting back and he wasn't quite himself yet and it probably helped Steph in the finals. But then as we know, that summer he got the bag, he got cold cocked by Draymond and since he just hasn't been the same. Draymond, I, I really think he psychologically ruined this dude and I'm dead serious. The year they won the championship, Jordan Poole had the second highest plus minus only behind Steph. The following season with Golden State, he was the only warrior that averaged 30 minutes a night that had a negative plus minus. In the playoffs, he was damn near unplayable. Nine of his 14 games, he shot under 40%. Last year with Washington, he had one of the lowest plus minus in the entire league. At one point, it felt like Jordan Poole was the gem of this draft. And oh my God, Golden State, they did it again. And since he feels like he's on one of the worst contracts in the sport. Our NBA player Kevin Porter Jr. was arrested at a Manhattan hotel for domestic assault, allegedly. Police say the Houston Rockets guard assaulted his girlfriend at the Millennium Hotel overnight. And Kevin Porter Jr., a player that's shown flashes multiple times. Rockets fans know what he can do but he tends to have bad body language at times and a lot of his pre-draft issues that made him drop in the first place, they showed their ugly head. Last season, he was basically suspended for the entire year for violating this girl and we know who she is. And this year, he's back with the Clippers and trying to work himself back, but it's sad how he even got here to begin with. His last six games actually playing NBA basketball, this, this is what he was averaging and just like that, he was gone. If you guys like this video, like this video, this is one draft that to me hasn't really made a lot of sense. You do have guys reviving their careers like Kobe White, RJ Barrett played good with the Raptors, Nick Claxton, cool. But a lot of the stars and the players that popped, it seemed like they all damn near at the same time hit that one halt. Uh, follow my social media sites, turn on post notifications, do all that great stuff guys, and until next time as always, stay tuned.